Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are looking at Euclidean algorithms. Finding the greatest common factor, I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. Let's get into it. First off, a Euclidean algorithm, we're going to use it to find the greatest common factor. It's typically used with larger numbers, so I would not recommend this for small numbers where you can easily list out the factors and find the greatest common factor. Let's take a look at it using these two numbers, 96 and 144. What you will do is set up the long division, just like you normally would do long division. Your smallest number will go on the outside of the division symbol, larger number inside, just like that. Now we're going to do long division like normal. How many groups of 96 inside of 144? Well, there's one. 1 times 96 is 96. When we subtract, we end up with 48. Now this is when the algorithm starts to kick in. We take that remainder and it becomes, or well, first off, let's put the uh, divisor from our previous question inside, and then our remainder becomes the new divisor. So now we have a new question there, 96 divided by 48. And we solve that. There are two groups of 48 inside of 96. When we multiply, we get 96 and we get an even zero. This is what we're looking for. When you get to the point of having a zero remainder, the number that is our divisor is actually the greatest common factor. That's it. So this method requires that you do some long division and it requires that you might do several steps of long division but what it saves you doing is listing all of those factors of 96 and 144 and searching for the greatest common factor. All right, let's look at another example here. We're going to follow exactly the same steps. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and try it out. I'll help you get set up. First off, we give our long division symbol, put the smaller number on the outside, larger number on the inside. Boom. Go ahead and try that out pause and practice, and then come back to watch the full solution. All right, are you back? There is one group of 105 inside of 126. 1 times 105 gives us 105. When we subtract, we get 21. Now, we are because we have a remainder, we need to do a second set of long division. We're going to put the divisor from the first question over inside. The remainder from the second one becomes our new divisor. And there we go. Now we're going to solve. How many groups of 21 inside of 105? There's five. When we multiply, we get our zero remainder. That tells us that 21 is the greatest common factor of these two numbers, 105 and 126. Here's our next example. Find the greatest common factor of 48 and 68 using this algorithm that we've been talking about. Try it out. Pause and practice. With this one, I didn't help you get it set up, but here is the setup for this question. You will put the smaller number, 48, over there as your divisor. Put your larger number, 68, inside and begin. There is one group of 48 inside of 68. So we'll multiply and subtract. We move our remainder up, and our 48 is the number that goes inside there. Just like that. That's how we set it up. How many groups of 20 inside of 48? There's going to be two of those. 2 times 20 is 40. We'll subtract and get 8. Again, our 20 is going to go inside, and our 8 is going to become our new divisor. And then we work it out. Let's see. There are two groups of 8 inside of 20. 2 times 8 is 16. When we subtract, we get 4. Hopefully at this point, we're recognizing that this is going to be the end of this long trip here because 8 divided by 4 is 2. And that leaves us with our final solution that 4 is the greatest common factor of 48 and 68. We'll now move on to our final example. This one here will help show some repetition, repetition, and a repetition. 
let's find the greatest common factor of 756 and 438. With this one, be careful, because I did not put the numbers in order, smallest first and largest second. But set that one up and try it out, and then come back to the recording and see if you have mastered this algorithm. Here we go, let's set it on up. For long division, we're going to put the smaller number as our divisor and our larger number inside. So again, I kind of crisscrossed those numbers there on purpose. Now what we're going to do is how many groups of 438 are there inside of 756? There's one. So we'll multiply and subtract and then set up our next um, long division question. We're going to again find that there is one group of 318 inside of 438. We'll multiply, subtract, and set up our next question. Boom. I'm going pretty quick through this at this point because as you may guess just by the title of this slide, this is going to take some repetition. Let's uh, figure this one out. We need 2. 2 times 120 is 240. We will subtract and set up our next. Wow. 120 goes inside, 78 goes outside, and we're going to find that there is one group of 78 inside of 120. We multiply, subtract, and set up our next long division question. 78 on the inside, 42 on the outside. There is one group we're subtracting again to get 36. 36 is going on the outside, 42 on the inside. There's one group of 36 inside of 42. We're going to subtract and this gives us six. Now we've run out of space, so I'm going to set up the next question down there with six as my divisor, 36 going inside, just like that. Six times six is 36, leaving us finally at our greatest common factor of six for the numbers 756 and 438. In this one, it took quite a few steps, but again, I'm wondering if it's probably still a little quicker than listing all of the factors of those two large numbers. I don't know. That might be something for you to put in the chat box. Do you think that this method will save any time on these larger numbers, even if you've got a ton of steps like this? Go ahead and put your comments in the comment box. So you have officially survived the Euclidean algorithms for greatest common factors lesson. I hope it was helpful for you. Definitely keep practicing and have a wonderful day.